So we're going to watch today gameplay of Viscon from our viewers. Um, and he's plat. He sent his de defense side of race to, for the water view. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to understand the comms because we just don't understand the language. But that's fine. All right, so pistol round. You actually go for a sheriff on a pistol round. So when it comes to pistol buys, I do think it's huge preference on players unless you're a character like Sova or Sage because there's objectively speaking always a mistake if you don't buy a, uh, a wall for Sage on any pistol round and if you don't buy a drone for attacking round on Sova that's like 110% mistake even in ranked okay when it comes to other agents I don't perceive it as a mistake I would say it's personal preference although I'm not a fan of buying sheriff on maps like split because you don't you don't really benefit from it like the only benefit from playing a sheriff in a pistol round over here is that you're gonna shoot through the wall otherwise the ghost is almost as efficient unless you go for body shots with two like taps to the chest but if people have if people have armor then your sheriff is essentially like you're playing against a full buy remember that if you don't headshot people and they have small shield, they virtually have full shield because you still need to hit three times against someone who has 125. So when you think about it, Sheriff on a pistol round only works well when you know that your opponents will mostly play ghosts. And also if the range is pretty, pretty high because you're going to benefit from the high damage output long range while they will not. <laughs> okay okay <laughs> that's that's uh, i know that trick well you took the space which is nice i like this like you use your utility in a way that makes it uh, like 100% uh, efficient, like you use the paint shells you, with the smoke to clear it and now you're holding the angle, but now you have the problem that you're being committed because you're an agent that has no utility right now, right? You only that sheriff and you need to hold an angle. So let's see how we deal with that. So one player rotates off, you're still holding, which is good discipline. The, the the uh the sound is i think a little bit delayed right yeah uh it doesn't matter though like and that's what i said right you commit it to an angle and if you if you go one for one here right if you go one for one it's not positive for the def def defense defense right you need to kill two or kill one and fall back and you're in a position where you're unable to you're unable to do that because your gun doesn't benefit you from holding this angle, right? Like, you're not benefit, benefiting from this at all, from this situation. So you got punished because you went into a location that doesn't really align with the game plan that you had, right? Imagine, like, imagine that you're playing in this position right here. Like this, with a classic armor or, or just ghost. You're able to, like, be more mobile and like have more bullets in case there are more players pushing you but if there are like two players pushing here and you have a sheriff there's a there's like you get one if you get one that's even lucky if you get two that's like miracle and you're most likely gonna get zero so even if you get the the lucky outcome which is one you're still hurting your team on defense so holding from this angle over here only be is benefiting you when you know that your gun is gonna give you an easier way of getting multi-kills so you know rifles shotguns uh or having a mobility out right if you have satchels well then it's definitely easier because you can do this right and you can you can essentially like double tap that's something that people don't really do with rays like shit. you can double tap satchels i'm not a race main by the way right but if you double tap satchels you have instant slides 
right? Like this. It's it's a something that not many people do, and I think it's a very big thing to actually understand to uh, to like maximize, right? To change the position after you're getting a kill and so on. But in general, this position that you played in the pistol round didn't benefit you at all and you end up costing the first death on defense and essentially most likely the the round right well it actually guys won so never mind but still it's a huge mistake uh, yes of course you're gonna see the map my bad uh let me move it my bad on the map we're gonna turn off the place from that oh that's that's uh, something mechanical um that you can work on you see where you're aiming with the uh with the crosser you're not ready for that uh, for that position that is something that you should def definitely think more about and you're doing the ping so you should be ready for that. So the reason why you can use the pings there, and it's very important, by the way, when you're going to do that, right? When you're playing in this location and you're pinging the position that the players will be standing at, right? Then you know where to hold your crosser. So when you're swinging like this, you see? Like you want to swing like this. You want to swing exactly into this position without moving your crosser. And if you swing like this, and you have to reposition your Corsair, well, that just costs you time and most likely killed you. Right? So that's one thing that definitely needs a little bit of work. See, so I like... I like the way you use the paint shells the round before. Because you took the space. Although taking the space was a mistake in the first place, so the paint was also a mistake in that pistol round, right? Because you weren't, like, equipped to hold that angle. But now, you use the best utility piece to stop an execute for nothing. Right? That's one of the biggest uh, things that I see. The crosser placement is a little bit too low, right? Like, you're, you're ready to, like, shoot someone in the dick, essentially, right? And, and people typically don't push out close. They first are gonna go, like, this is, like, this is the box, right? This is the box where the people will be, will be peeking from, right? So you're gonna have, like, four possible angles, right? And the head will be, like, here, 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 right? So those are the locations that you want to look at. And your crosser placement should be most likely for with a with a marshal or an operator over here, somewhere around here, because it will guarantee that you have ready, uh, you are ready for the up highest uh, highest peak, right, from the person that is hugging this wall in the background. But you also have a possibility of shooting the head of a player who is like peaking close or is like peaking in the middle, right. So you're prepared for all the angle right now. By holding the closest angle over here, right? Because this is this is ready for someone who's peeking from the closest angle. And that's a headshot on him. And that's basically it. So you're not ready for the other angles. Always think, if you have multiple levels, always think how to hold your cross set to be like, to be ready on all angles. And again, you are being caught in the position that you shouldn't have been in, Right? Like you are, this is like a repeat of the pistol round. You should be using satchels to reposition. So when you're when you hit there, you know when you're when when you're sitting like you're kind of fucked because you have a really bad gun. You have a really bad gun to hold this, right? On anti eco is basically an opto. Well, if they do not, if they don't force, like here they force, and then now it's the marshal is really bad. Kinda like the kinda like the sheriff on the pistol round if they have shields. Oh, he's dead! 
going, 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 going. Oh. Yeah, there was no, for, no need for that, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, you have 3.9, and you should, as a team, I would say you should be forcing here because you already have like rifles. Yeah, okay, I like that. But uh, what I do think. You know, I only saw two rounds of you, right? But the the hardware that you bought on pistol round and on round two tells me that you like high precision guns because you bought the sheriff for the pistol round and the marshal for a round two. But this map doesn't benefit you from those guns. You know, like this this map is so up close and personal. Like you should be utilizing shotguns and SMGs more on rounds like, uh, like round two, for example. Stinger, Spectre, Judge are fantastic choice. Well, you took the space, but now what? So you posted the brim there. Okay, I like that. I like that, although, that again, that's that's another character that is kind of fucked, and now you can see on the minimap that he went back. So you did take a little bit of space, but not really. Like, no one pushed out of that position or is, like, even still holding it, right? But I like the initial idea, but that should be someone who is able to hold it more personally and, like, with more confidence, right? So it should probably be holding that B, it should probably still be the raise with the satchel, so just go out. Or Sage, just wall up. I think the best best possibility there would be just walling up the B main and just falling back. You know? And before you guys say it, you should be doing a wall that is not jumpable from the trash. But yeah. Breach or Brim can hold that space. No, it's the same, it's the same concept that I explained in the pistol round. If you're holding... If you're holding from here, right, from this area over here on B main and you don't get two kills or zero for or one for zero or two for one, then you're initially just putting a dent into defense. So if you want to hold angles like that, you need someone that has an escape mechanism or has the confidence and the hardware to boost up that confidence to get two kills. We were playing off contact, that's... that's okay, that, that was really well played. It is a little bit over peaky in the CT, but I, I like the initial way you picked off... Uh, wanted to pick off um, Killjoy's contact. Wait, wait, why are you going for small shields here? Yeah, th this this is one hundred percent mistake. You should not be going for small armor here. Like this is one hundred percent full armor uh, buy on this round. Look at the cash of your team. Sage has almost six k. Kills you three point eight. You have three point four and. By the amount of cash that you have, look, you will have 5.3 next round. So you buy you buy the shield. You still have you have still abundance of cash. So this should be a full full buy with with full shields. Is this pull? Uh, yeah, the stun. Okay, so the stun was way too late. Um, there was no pull. All right, so if you, be, I'm, I'm assuming you're playing in a five stack. I will show you how to do this. Um, let me just swap to brimst uh, the brimstone to breach. So what sh breach should be doing left. is he should be first, right? So you play breach. You go into this location, right? And when you look at the minimap, 
You're able to stun. You're able to stun when the beggar drops. Just like this. That's the fastest stun you can do. You don't, you don't even have to charge it much. Just like this. And that's it. And when you stun like that, they're not able to hold you because it's so fast. Right? So you stun all of those people that are standing over here. Let me show you again. It stuns everyone at the beginning of the round, and that's when Astra pulls and you nade. Right? So you can do this in a more efficient way. So Breach stuns first. He stuns this location over here. Then the Astra pulls, right? And then you nade. Because if, if that's the way you want to, like, take the space here, right? That is a possibility. But if you as Rays are peeking first from this location, well, that essentially kills you. Like, in most cases, you're going to be dead because you're peeking before that stun even goes through. Right? So it's like, you're standing here. And in this round, you're literally, like, peeking with your, without your gun out into a player that is just holding this angle. In, like... 9 out of 10 cases, he should be killing you. Let's look at this from, our, from uh, once more. See? Like this? This right here? He should have been dead. Right? And you look at your breach. He's not ready to even help you. Like, he's so far away. See this? He needs to charge... The, the stun, release it, and that takes too much time. So in general, I would say that I like the fact that you guys are trying to take space in B main at the beginning of the round, but it but it 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 really needs better understanding of. Um, of how to use utility in which order, right? Or you should be keeping you should be keeping your paint shells to stop a push. Let me just sum it up for you. Uh, split. So bridge stands here. Minimum effort stun, right? Like not long, just like this, because you only you only care about those angles first. So. This doesn't have to be long. Just a minimal stun like this, right? Minimal stun like this. Uh, where's Astra? Astra, well, over here most likely, right? Because the players, you want to put it behind the players that are standing at the barrier. And then the third one is your satchels, uh, sorry, is your paint shows being thrown over here. But it's like breaches first and you have to like train it. Like breach goes, bury it down. Bam! Stun. And after that happens, pull at the fastest possible moment when the star is ready. And then after that stun hits, that's when you throw the satchels. Uh, that's when you throw the paint shows, right? It's very important to understand, like, the way, the ordering of stuff. But also, remember that if you're, you don't, if you don't have to do this every round, because you're not going to have... The pensions to stop the push. Now imagine if you had the pensions over here, right? Because you didn't take the space and be main, so you use so much util for basically nothing, right? Oh, what? What is going on over here? What, what is going on over here, my friend? You just went full glass cannon when you have the ultimate. I'll be honest with you. I would consider this huge mistake. Because basically, by not buying armor, you deny yourself the ultimate this round. Because you cannot reliably just satchel in and like do any of the crazy stuff when you have 100 HP, right? And again, I have the same constructive feedback on the way you play the high precision guns in positions that don't really like benefit and you're like 
condition your opponents that you're always standing here. Let's, let's see how you play that out. But I think this round, just because you have the ultimate, you should not be running an operator. And also, remember that your team has a full buy, but you go like a glass cannon, something that you don't really do when you it's unless it's super necessary. This is a huge risk that you're taking. And also, look, the angle that you take, angle that you take right here, you're you're super late. Like if you're if you really want to be efficient at that peak, right? If you really want to be efficient at that peak, you should be peaking from. Let me reset. You should be peaking from the right side of the barrier, because what you're doing here, if you're peaking from this angle, the line is further that you have to go. If you're peaking from here, the line is faster. Like you don't have to move that fast. Uh, sorry, that much, right? When the barrier drops, like let's let's do the same thing as you do, right? So over here, and you have to do footsteps over here to see instead of over here so it benefits you because you're peaking faster right you're way faster with the peak right you're like two steps and you're in here you have to run in see the difference like how much it is and also you are an easier target because you are more exposed it's harder to go away and get easier to head bank uh, sorry to, to wall bank you if you're if you're standing over here rather than here because you are faster you can use the satchels right like if you're trying to peek like this this is probably the way you want to do it like you want you need to work on the cross placement to know exactly where you have to be at to be ready for this shot and you do something like this that should be your plan like get a shot try to kill instantly satchel back so you don't get traded I don't like hugging the wall as it lowers my speed, but no one is Vice Clone, no one is talking about hugging the wall. Look, I'm not I'm not hugging the wall. I'm just going like this. I'm just going through here. Full speed. Full speed. Nothing slows me down here. Here we go. I was watching someone explain split defense. They said aggressively fighting for B main and controller to aggressive is one of the biggest mistakes made by low yield players. Well, explain the concept already with those few rounds. Like, if you're taking the space, you need to be very certain that you can get 2041 essentially there, right? See, this is this is again like you just use your paint shells for no effect and you're holding a gun that doesn't benefit from that smoke. Like, if you're holding the operator, you shouldn't be smoking this, right? There should be a one-way smoke or a deeper smoke. Like, this does the, this, this, this default smoke here literally makes you less inclined to do any damage. So you're now kind of useless for the team. And now we're retaking with a gun that is not made for retaking, right? And if you're gonna go for the ultimate, there's a very high chance you're gonna get just ripped from the sky with three bullets. Well. Good satchels, but still 100% mistake. Doesn't matter that you got two kills. You still lose a, you still lose a round, and you retake with an operator, no armor. Like, doesn't matter that you got two kills. It really doesn't matter. Now let's you, let's let us uh, what do you do on the low buy. Yeah, 
So why 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 did you buy only one satchel, no boom board? You have a lot of cash. Look, look. You have four point nine for the next round. So you can buy everything. You can buy boom board, two blast packs, right? And you will still have 4.2k for the next round, which is a full buy. And I consider it always a mistake if you're not fully buying your utility on lower buy rounds. If you have cash for a full buy next round. Because you don't have to use the utility even when you have it, right? That's one of the biggest mistakes I see also in pro play on round 2. When they lose pistol round, they're not buying utility on round 2. And sometimes they have rounds when you're winning and then you have no utility. Remember, always buy the utility, have no intention of using it unless you need it. Like, unless you feel like, oh, we have an, 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 a, a possibility of winning this round, let me use the utility that I had as a backup plan. Okay. Okay. I'm also, the fact that your breach buys a full armor on a, on a low buy round, I don't know if he has full util, but this is uh, like... Oh, this is a huge bait, by the way. I'm not sure what you guys are communicating here, but if I would see this in ranked, I would be so mad at the race. Like, either by not communicating with each other, right? Because your breach is fighting, you're essentially dead. Because... Like, there's, there was no coordination between you. He He's peeking with a flash, and he has a gun that is not equipped to, to actually go for a flash. Guys, if you play with flashes like this breach, please, for the love of God, don't use the sheriff. It has a one second equip time. Like, that's like a rifle. And it's a high precision gun. And when you people are flashed, they're not standing still. So it's so hard to kill someone after you flash with a sheriff. The call was baiting for them in, into a trap. But what's the trap? Because you, you don't really benefit from, from this. Like, there's no trap here. Yeah, like you're just standing default and by using the by using this paint shells right here right what was the trap i didn't understand it like the bridge was peaking so he's most likely dead and then you're just standing default there was no trap play a trap play would be for example wait vala plant A trap play would be... Where's my valid plant? Like, you can essentially say this is a trap play. Because you use a combination of util to do a trap. But the way that you guys are playing here, this is essentially baiting. It's not a trap play. This is different concepts. I understand that you might be using it for, like, nomenclature because barrier language and so on. But there's no possibility of setting up a trap. Like, you're just standing holding default. Like, if you stand over here, and the breach is baiting for you, and then he falls back, that's essentially semi-trap play, because you're being set up by the breach. But if you're just holding default, there's nothing here, you know? Like, you just hold default, and essentially baiting the breach. Because everyone will be expecting more players to be on B-side. So when they peek out, they're still going to be ready for you. You know? And the point is, if you want to do a diversion, your opponents should not be ready for you. Right? So, for example, the easiest thing to do is we disregard utility, we disregard everything. We just we just look at locations of players. If you're... If the B, if the B main breach is peeking out and falling back loudly onto site, then he's essentially baiting for you. And you are able now to be set up when they are pushing out. But if you're holding like this and he's peeking out, taking the damage and then fully back on site, you did nothing and your opponents are still expecting you to be here. You know? I don't want to jiggle to bait the bridge ult and rush in. We use the combo night on combo nade on site, but you can't really do that. Look. You guys are playing on low buy, right? You cannot... Your your teammate already used utility. And this is not a trap. No one is going into that nade. Like, you just... What you did is use the pain shells, right? For stopping a push. 
Which you did get one kill, but this entire round is again like just like the ultimate. You had a positive outcome, but in general, it's not a good play. Like I want to understand that this this the way that you guys set it up. This is just pure luck that you didn't get a kill when you were jumping up with the ultimate on 100 HP. That your opponents just rushed in into a pain shells. Like you shouldn't be getting the kill through the pain shells here. Your opponents should be just there, you know, stopped by the pain shells to push in. Yeah, I understand that you got the pull on the entrance, but. The thing is, your opponents just played really dumb. And the same happened. You still lost the run, see? Like, the outcome is negative, even though you got kills. You have to think out in a different way. The ultimate that you did in the previous round, you got two kills. But was it a good decision? Wasn't. You baited your breach here to, like essentially not do much and you got the kill with the pain shots and the and the suck but it would the same outcome would be possible if you if that bridge wouldn't be peaking like that's the that's the aspect that i'm trying to explain this player peeking out here is not needed and he's there's a very high chance he's just gonna be dead and you can do this play over here by just playing positioning on heaven or under heaven and just waiting for contact. So you don't need to bait any of your teammates. Mm. The same thing here. Like, look, your breach, he's dead. Why is he standing in a position like this? This breach here, 100% mistake. It, like, he, he should be standing over here, behind the wall, so he's not peaked. Like, you cannot help him. He's the first in front of you, right? So there's like, he can be killed. And he's out of the utility in hand. Where he can go through walls with the flash, so he should be standing two steps over here. <laughs> And also, like, what, what's the flash for? You can't really push. Like, you're too far away. Guys, remember, I'm not insulting people. I'm trying to explain concepts. And might sound like nitpicking, but that's the reason for people to send votes. You want to learn as much as possible from this. Hey, d -backs. Hi. Yeah, your, uh, your Astra made a huge mistake, but just got triple kill. So it's like, no one waited for the retake. Every, like, the Astra just went alone, got the triple kill, and that's about it. But no one was, no one, even though you had five players alive, you didn't play together. Isaac, thank you so much for the tier one. Welcome, welcome to the family. If you could introduce yourself to us, that would be absolutely fantastic. Man, I wish I would understand the comms, but I can't. Contact stun, did I understand correctly? It's a little bit too early on the peak. A little bit too early because the stun didn't go off yet. But... Otherwise this, is, this was fine, but th there's no need for this boom bot right here. Like, this boom bot doesn't tell you anything. You already know that there are players there, so you just kind of spam the boom bot for no reason. Remember, always have intent behind utility. And that boom bot had no intent. It's five second duration, no one is gonna be in that B main, they're gonna be in front of B main.
Mod, 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 mod. Because you just used the stun for that position. Yeah, it, like, I think this is this is the main thing that many people need to fix. Almost every single vote of you that I do results in the same in the same advice. People are using utility for the sake of using it without having the idea what to do after you use the util. Like, you use the pain shells, but it has no effect. You didn't peek off it, you didn't force anyone from an angle, and now you lost your two main pieces of utility that are great into stopping a potential push. So one is ramp. They're just playing default. Uh, this is a very lazy peek. Look, look. This is a small thing that you should... Like, see? This is very similar to the way that you peeked from B main. Like, you peek B main into watching this wall over here. You peek ramp into watching a wall. Instead, where your crosser should be already here. Right? That's another thing that people... Um, the shift peaks that are happening... It, it, that's something that you kind of need to, like, em ingrain in your brain, right? This is something that you, it will go into your habit once you start doing it, like, all the time. When you're here, you should be peeking, like, way closer to the angle, right? Like, when you're going like this... My god, Epic Pen will be... Like, okay, I cannot press fire. But if you peek like that, you're not ready to fight. If you peek, and it, remember, you peeked with a shift, so you're pressing shift and you're peeking like this. So you're like an easy target, not for me though. Uh, you're an easy target, and you're not holding the proper cross placement. So when you're holding like this, and you want to check ramp, you need to look, like you can even align this here. You see the wall here. Oh, fuck me. Thank you, Epic Pen. You see the wall, you can help yourself with like our visual cues on the wall. You see this, right? So when you're gonna be peeking, you know that your crosser has to be over here to have good crosser placement, right? You can use the environment to, like, know where you have to peek. And also, very important thing, very important thing, when you peek out, fuck me, right? When you peek out, learn uh, uh, something that is very important in general, when you are peeking out, there's a distance that you can peek without a shift, but you will not make any noise. So, this is where you did the step, right? This is the distance when you start doing noise. And you should do practice when you shift. Uh, sorry, you, you, you peek without shift and you don't make noise. See? This is like full speed that you can peek out and you are not doing any noise. So you want to make that a habit. You want to practice that in, in like outside of the game to make sure that your brain understands how long can you run without pressing shift and not doing any noise. Uh, I, I like how you incorporate the English callouts in your own language. It's very similar to Polish. Wingman plant. Like I would say the same in 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 in, 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 in Polish, you know. I like the fact also that you had the instinct to shoot the fucking ultimate. Very nice. So I'm not a race main. Are you always like satcheling out with the weapon without the weapon to like have maximum velocity or something? Like here with an, with an IFR? Probably not, right? But it, I actually don't know. Like, I, but it, you're gonna have faster speed, right? Getting half, nice. Your Astra got the half, which is very nice. Good job. Well played. I like the way you did play the you play here. 
sao sao đoán được mà ngon 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 lỗi 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 ngon đi ngon 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 The fuck was that breach stun? Slap your breach in the fucking head. Like this breach stun doesn't stun anything. This is like going here. Uh, sorry. This is like the breach stun. Right? Like this doesn't help you at all. They're not stunned and you go straight into the bullets. But this is exactly what I explained before like already. Like this is... The, you, you are essentially killed by the combination of one util from your team that is not really efficient and you peeking into an angle that is 100% hold held by your, by your opponents and your breach is not even ready to like flash after that so yeah well, i mean we covered this already like the b main utility playing of each other the angles that you take we already covered that everything so this is definitely something that you need to work on Could have more, a little bit more discipline, he gets like two or three. But it's still nice. Could have probably killed, not probably, but he could have killed the, the gecko first, not instead of the wingman. I understand that was like pressure situation. Mm, nice discipline on that guy. Uh, but this guy, this is LeBron's James. No, sorry. Anko and Mung. I think his sensitivity is way too low. He's like dragging his mouse 15 times and lifting it up to like do do a do a switch, you know? Wait, how much cash do you have? Your team is what? This this is a really weird buy. What is happening here? There's some disconnection over here. Like Kosuke, I think, buys too many full shields, by the way. Like, this round, he should be playing half shields, so he has more cash for the next one, because this is this is a half buy, right? This is a half buy, so Astra should not be full buying, should, should be playing, like, half shield, different gun, maybe a judge, for example, on split. And then this person should be playing small shields. Yeah. If this is a half buy, I'm not sure what you guys are communicating. Right. Yeah, you changed, you swapped. Okay, everyone's swapped, which is good. But I, I, I tell you, Breach, that he's definitely buying too many full shields. Like, there's... I feel like he could have one more full buy in this game if he would not buy full shields on his low buys. Hello, Xu. Copy. Copy. Nó mà vào tao ulti luôn nhá, tao sẵn sàng chết tao ulti nhá. So, I <laughs> this is so funny. So, in a professional play, I would say this is a good timing for the pain shells because your opponents should be running out at the 5 seconds mark from the enemy killjoy. But for ranked, I know this pain shells is shit because no one is running at the correct timing of the killjoy lockdown. Like, if I would be drilling a team how to play with the killjoy lockdown, they should be running in at 5 seconds. You know? But, are, but this is ranked and no one will do that. Every single person that I see in ranked, Immortal 3, Radiant, doesn't matter. They will fucking wait till the ult explodes and then they go, which is 100% mistake. You know? So you should be holding that paint shells. You should maybe even consider repositioning with the satchels towards backside and then throwing the paint shells when the ult is almost at the explosion time to stop them from pushing. So... This is not the best timing. 
Not bad, yeah. I watch LLS, I do it at five seconds. Yeah, which is good. I'm I'm I really like that. But yeah, people wouldn't rank. The reason why I did that video is because people don't know that. So you kinda outsmart yourself by doing the proper thing that is expected of your opponents, but your opponents will never do that because they're do too dumb. So it's like next time. Keep it, <laughs> you know, keep it. People in ranked are not gonna run in at the proper timing of the Killjoy lockdown, you know? Like you're, you're, you're outsmarting yourself, outthinking yourself, you know? Oh, oh, oh. Consider satcheling to go through this, like... Uh, ah! uh, well, I cannot give you mechanical advice, but you know this was not, like, clean, right? But yeah, if you guys if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, in Doro's lab there's a video about the how to play with a killjoy lockdown, and I talk about those timings there, which should be expected of you, you know, when you play killjoy, like how you should play as a team. But in rank that's just not happening unless the killjoy literally yells go 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 in the proper timings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vice Clone, I think it was the idea was good. Just mistimed the ultimate, right? So you weren't able to shoot it the moment you wanted it to be, to be shot. Monster on the loose. Monster on the loose. Mina. Remember that you wanted to like, just so, so small, small nitpicky thing. You have killed you on A side, and you wanted to push out in the disposition, which is not always a mistake, but depending on what you do as a team, right? Like, if you're gonna go and push this, and there's no no one gonna be here, you're not gonna die, right? Then this killjoy utility has to be recalled, and killjoy has to rotate, right? So, depending on what you want to achieve as a team, as a five stack, I can't really like say it's mistake or not mistake, but just have that in mind. If you if you would have pushed out, right? This is wingman planned. This is way too late. He's gonna plant already. So I don't like this paint shows at all. You know it's wingman planned because he goes. Spike planted. Got my eye. Did they they didn't have a nap? I don't know, man. It's like. I guess it happens. Three kills. What the fuck happened with that boombot? <laughs> See, like, I don't, I don't like this ultimate from Killjoy. Look at the minimap. It doesn't achieve anything. You see the, you see the ultimate? Like, the area it clears is essentially CT. That's it. That's the only thing it cleared. Because otherwise, people will still be here, people will still be here. Like, it doesn't affect the biggest, the biggest thing, which is backside B. So what you should do here as the Killjoy, the Killjoy should be going either from CT to ult from here, or if you can't because you're running out of time, I think what you should be doing as a Killjoy is probably even ulting from here. Wait, let me actually check since I never did that. So let us check. Let us, like, we should all learn. Is the ultimate from heaven better in that corner? Let's check. Because we want to achieve at least something with it, right? 30 seconds left. So let's Thrifty. check if this is gonna be better. Everyone, note down your observations, then let's run it again. Don't overthink it. That's my job. Yeah. Yeah. I would consider. This being better, if you ult from here, because it clears B main, you force opponents to fight you and go out of B main. And if you're gonna go on side with this kind of ultimate, then you don't have to worry. Like when you have to, like when you jump down from heaven, right? You have 100% better possibility of fighting because you know your opponents either have to run out out of main into you. Or you're gonna be just fighting with your backs cleared. Right? So if you're not able... If you're not able to ult from CT... Because 
you know, this ult is probably the best one. Oh shit, fucking epic can. Like, ugh, ugh, ugh. the ult from, from here is most likely the best one because it forces people to go into main, but then you still have to fight them from main, which might not be beneficial, right? But you are gaining something. But in this case, if you're going heaven and you cannot go CT because you're worried that it's not cleared or you're running out of time, going into this corner and just ulting from here is definitely better than ulting from here. Because this one, it only clears the CT. But then you still have to fight the most fucking awkward crossfire ever in existence, which is B main and backside and pillar, right? And if you ult from heaven, from this angle, over here, right? We can even make it like a little bit better than this corner. So we're just going to do it like this from here, right? And now we're going to be able to fight the pillar and the backside. And the CT is like, you can just check it anywhere, right? But you're able to fight those people without being affected by B main. Because right now, this ultimate, like, did nothing. I like the diligence that your teammate was looking at the, in the other direction. I like that. The other play that you could have considered... I like the way you guys played here. No question asked. The only real thing that you could have maybe considered... But I don't think that it could have been ending better it's just different option would be you satcheling in this position into a safe angle right to check like side satchel to check if someone is playing in backside so your killjoy can swing after you do the distraction right and then you hold b main so it's like 250 50s because if you only see one player you're certain that the other player will be b main because your killjoy cleared ct with the ultimate right so if you satchel here you bait essentially for killjoy to peek this player and take a 50 50 and then you hold with a better angle towards b main because this player is gonna peek into here and he's gonna get an easy fr he, he, you are essentially having an easy frag as well <laughs> Hey Godson, hey Garrett. Hello Circular. I don't know if I thank you for the Pokedex, but thanks to you, I'm much more confident and terrifying Euro player. <laughs> no man. Thanks man. I I glad you you found help in the in the Valorant decks. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, exclamation mark compendium. Talk, talk. So you reposition, but you don't know what's happening yet. You're waiting. I like this. I like this. Consider making your... Wait, can you make the minimap even bigger? I don't think you can, right? I mean, you should be too. You should be able to. Or is just the split being so big? I don't even know. Because sometimes you don't see this entire map, right? But that bugs me. This is personal preference. I, I wouldn't be able to play even on, on rotating map. Like, it's, it's it, it just kills my brain. But minimap is 100% preference. Is Magneto worth card? Yeah, it's a very good card, I would say. Very good card. Hello, N9. This, this angle that you hold here, right? This angle that you hold here, the same... Um, this is the same criticism that I, that I had f uh, for you when you played in this position on B main. Remember, you... In this kind of positioning, you need to go two for one or one for zero. So you need to be ready to use those satchels out to like, go back and shit, right? 
this angle is really tough to play because you're also gonna have multiple players coming in with different fucking like crosser placement so this is really tough to get like positive outcome here how pay to win is snap it can be free to play but it's also terribly expensive if you are not if you're not free to play it's terribly expensive I liked your reposition. It was a little bit inefficient, right? In a way that I think I spoke already about. Remember that you don't have to always like do stuff. Oh shit, I'm killjoy. Uh, you don't uh, you don't always have to like do the normal race satchels. You can just slide through. Thirty seconds left. Remember that it's very important. Like as a race, most of your satchels should be just slides. Like this is good enough already. Like, you just slid, and you the amount of time that you saved through that... See this? Like, I saved so much time, I didn't have to look down. Right? I have lower air time as well. Oops. I'm not a race main, by the way. So, this is this is this requires practice. But you should be able to do, like, the double taps on satchels more efficiently for rotations. Sorry, not for rotations, but for, like, changing positions. Right? So, I would say that's something that you should you should be working on. And other thing that you did in this round... Like, let's take a look again, right? So, you repositioned. You're waiting for the breach contact. You should be going in before, by the way. Look. So, things... I, I, I think you baited the breach. I don't think intentionally... But you baited the breach a little bit. Because once you see on the minimap where the ult is, you can drop down right here. You can drop down right here. You should react to this, seeing this ult. And you should be dropping down right now. Because it, you're, it doesn't affect you. So if you drop down earlier, you can help the breach faster. Right? So you can be a little bit faster. And you should be insta-shooting that, that, that rain earlier. Like, 100% should be shooting that rain earlier. I like that. You lost a little bit of time on that satchel, right? And here, again, your cross placement a little bit inefficient. We talked a little bit about that already. And when you gunfight here, you are over-peaking. So you get one, but you shouldn't get one. You should be dead. Like, you're peeking into two players. Like, those people should be killing you without you getting any value. So... The proper reaction over here, reposition is nice, but you should be waiting for your opponents to peek you instead of you peeking them. So playing safer, stopping the movement behind the pillar right here, right? When you do this, you just stand over here and you wait for them to push you and, this, and, and you will hear if someone is going around you or they're going main and there are only three players. So there's a very high chance you can isolate more angles or even consider using Boombot here. Just delaying. Like, you are alone on site and your teammates are pretty far away. Like, they have to, like, two seconds. You need two more seconds on site. So, and you have two pieces of utility. If you are behind the pillar right here, you're not exposed to anyone, you can use the Boombot to bounce it, right? You can use the satchel for the other side to, like, make sure that no one is pushing you there. And essentially, because people are afraid of Satchos, I don't know why. They don't shoot it as well. But that, that's what ranked is. So you should be using your utility right now to delay them going onto site to buy this precious time. Because look how close your teammates are. If you would use the utility pieces, your teammates would be helping you right here. I will check it in a moment, Garrett. So yeah, buying time in this round with the utility was very important, all right? So, all right, that concludes the vote review. I hope you learned something from it. Um, the main thing is that your guns that you choose for many of the rounds are high precision guns that don't really benefit playing on split. The position that you take in many rounds has really risky outcomes that you cannot, like risk manage right which is a big 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 no-no in general uh and the utility that you use in a lot of cases you 
think you had an idea what to do with it, but the reality was that you used the utility for no reason, right? From the like the B main, from like not having the painters to stop a push, and so on. Those are the, like the main takeouts, uh, and the cross placement for sure, and the uh, the peaks that you do with strafes that you should be doing with without making sound without shift. Hope you liked it. Hope you consider your $25 well spent. Thank you for sending the vote review. I know this requires courage and I applaud you. Clap in chat. Hope you guys also learned while doing this vote review.